Hi everybody, um, welcome to uh, what I think is my third Simutrans video. So in my previous Simutrans videos I just kind of talked about uh, cities I had made and I like barely touched on the actual gameplay of Simutrans. And in this uh, episode, which I hope to become a series or something, maybe I can make more, um, I'm hoping to go in depth and show you what exactly I'm doing in this game. Um, so, if you're unfamiliar with Simutrans, um, I don't want to, like, explain everything about it, um, but I hope that by watching this you can maybe be inspired to start playing it, and there's a great, uh, webpage about it, um, lots of information and tutorials. Um, you're definitely going to need tutorials if you've never played it before. There, it's a tricky game, it took me a while to really master it. Um... But I'll just say this, the whole point of Simutrans Extended is to simulate a realistic uh, environment um, focused on transportation. So uh, I'm just going to jump right in and I'll explain um, some basic stuff about this game. So right now it's the year 1876, it's winter time. Um, what we have here is my main city. Now. Since it's 1876, right now we're only playing with steam trains and very basic trams. So here I'll kind of show you around the city. Sorry if my computer's going being a little laggy. Um, it's probably the screen recording software, but it was free. So um, right here's the center city. Um, this is the biggest city in the map. And so that's why I've chosen to focus all of my transportation networks um, onto this main city. And here I'll turn on the station names. I had them turned off so you could like better get an idea of uh, my city, like what it really looked like. So there it is. There we go. I'll put it like that. And then we'll show waiting graphs. So as you can see, I have, you know, probably a hundred stations or so, or yeah, something like that, um, in this city. Most of them are tram stops for the tram network. And we have about one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, rail stations right here. Uh, my city's name is Cole Pike Load. I didn't make that name up. The, it's just like a random British name. It's kind of cool though. Um, this is Broadway Railway Station. And this is the hub of my rail network. Over here, we have the center city and one other station that's uh, pretty popular called Warden's Arms Stop. <clears throat> now, um, when I started the game, um, Copike Load Railway Station, Broadway Station, was the first uh, station to be built, and thus it is located on the edge of the map. Um, that's because it's pretty tricky to start um, demolishing buildings and expanding your network into the city when it's early in the game. So um, if when you start a game, uh, don't expect to be putting your station in the middle of the city. That's going to use up a lot of your money. Um, even though demolishing a house is very cheap, uh, you're going to find that building that building on the land. Um, that was previously occupied by the house is going to be very expensive because it takes that into account, the land value. So you're going to want to just put your station um, on the edge of the map. Or sorry, not the edge of the map, the edge of the city. So it's still um, touching, you know, housing areas and stuff, but it's uh, not going to be very expensive to claim the land. <clears throat> um, so... Um, when I'll, I think I'll just give you a couple tips on how to start your game. Um, I'm ho I'm hoping that you're watching this because you're interested in playing Simutrans, and I hope you're gonna uh, start a new game soon. So um, I'll give you a tip about building a depot. Um, uh, this isn't like Open TTD or the other versions of Simutrans. Um, in the beginning of the game, you start off with about two hundred and fifty thousand credits, and um, building a depot uh, uses 25,000 of those credits. So that's about, what, like a tenth or whatever, a twentieth of your funds. 
Um, and that's actually quite a bit because you're going to want to use all that money to build a network, build a build your railways. Railways, <laughs> sorry. Um, and let's see, uh, your average steam train is about 7,000 to 9,000 credits for, uh, for the engine and the carriages. So, yeah, you got to be really careful on where you build your uh, engine shed, your depot, because... Um, you don't want to have to delete it later. You don't want to have it get in the way of where you want to build your uh, rail line. And if you are building, um, how should I phrase this, uh, auxiliary lines, lines that are um, not really connected to your hub, you want your trains to be able to leave the depot and get um, to those other stations that are prob that are perhaps far away. Um, so that's just, uh, my first tip. And let's see. So this is, um, it may look like, well, here, sorry about that. Let me start off with this. Here is my transit network in its entirety at the moment. So these, uh, thick lines that you see, like right here, over here, the ones kind of branching out, those are all rail lines. Mm -hmm. And the thinner lines that you'll see right here, for instance, these small like spider webs, those are uh, bus lines or tram lines. Sorry, not bus lines. Buses have not been invented yet. They are uh, horse-drawn carriage lines. Those are your. Those are the closest thing you're gonna get. You're gonna get to buses um, when it's this early in the game. <clears throat> um. So yeah, this is my transit network in its entirety. And it may look like it's, um, you know, it's pretty far along. I've been playing this game for about, for a couple days now. Um, I've been playing it on and off. And so I've, ha I've gotten a lot of money and I've been able to expand quite a bit. But my network is still not that developed. It's still early in time and a lot of the, my lines are not um, that efficient. You see I have lots of turns, lots of sharp turns which slow down your trains. Um, none of my lines are double tracked for their entirety. Um, that's very expensive to do and it's not really that necessary at this point. Early in the game, not that many people um, relatively want to travel using trains which is historically accurate, apparently. Um, you know, people back then didn't need to commute uh, 20 miles. You know, they worked close to home, usually. And they didn't take day trips, usually. Only that was, like, for the, for the rich. So the amount of people using your network is not going to be that many in the early stages of your game. So it's not that important to make long trains or double-track your railways. All you want is just to be able to touch as many to reach as many towns as possible and you don't need to have that many trains a day going to it you should still try and like have you know make your train semi-frequent to these destinations but it's not that important to have like a you know a tokyo like situation where there's a train arriving every 10 minutes or whatever so here um let me give you another overview so here's the big city, coal pike load. And then over here is the second biggest city called Monkminster. Um, when I started the game, I it lets you configure the settings for city generation and map stuff. And so I put um, some high values for um, how many people, the average number of people in each city, how many cities there were, the uh, city clusters, which means that, see the, how there's these um, suburbs to the big city, to Monkminster, kind of around it. I put a high value for that, so I'd get lots of these um, suburban cities. And the, the first line I built was this one, going from Monkminster to Cold Pike Load. That was the most obvious choice. They're two very big cities, and they're pretty close to each other, so that was the guaranteed way to make some good money early in the game. And then I branched outward. Um, 
when it's early in the game after I ran out of money um, it's very expensive to build railways again once you run out of that initial um, loan so I started building um, ships and harbors um, which are quite slow but so here's my main harbor right here and I built steamship lines and sailing ship lines to connect the other cities on the map with uh, my main city. So see a lot of these other cities once had ports, but I've taken them away now that I've expanded the rail network to reach, uh, to reach them. And the rail network goes all the way down here. Here's another big city, Hogstock. Hmm, let's see. I'm not really quite sure what to talk about, actually. I'm not really sure what direction I want this video to go in. Um, I was thinking I could just show you how to set up a line, basically. It would be fun to start um, a game and do, like, a series of videos um, about Simutrans Extended from the very beginning. Um, however, it takes a long time to get... Um, you know enough money to start doing anything fun once you run out of that initial investment um, so I had to just leave my computer running for you know you know an hour at a time or whatever and then I'd get some good cash and then I'd start building and I'd run out and go into debt and I'd have to leave it again and let my money accumulate so here um, I'm gonna show you how I would build a rail line to connect this main line going from my main city to Cheeselham. I'm going to make a spur line from Mount Minstable over to St. Clement Tadvale. And I'll kind of give you an overview of how I would do that. So you're going to find that you have four different rail types. Um, and these can all, these are all, you know, have different, uh, specs about them. They're all different prices. This one is the most expensive steel track. Um, however, it, trains can travel the fastest on it and it has, and it has a higher weight limit, 17 tons versus the cheapest track which trains can only use at 80 kilometers an hour and can only support trains up to 15 tons. Since I'm, I have a lot of money, I'm just gonna build a steel track because later in the game, uh, I won't have to bother refurbishing the track to make way for the heavier trains and faster trains that I wanna use. So let's see. We have a river, so I'm gonna build a bridge over it. Let's see, I need to figure out how I'm going to approach the city. I've already cleared out a little space right here for the station. So the next step is going to be to delete some buildings. Now, I'm either going to delete this row of buildings or this row of buildings. I can't delete the street. Well, I can delete it, but I would have to um, destroy these houses. And actually, now that I say it, deleting this street is my best bet. There's a lot of rules in Simutrans when it comes to deleting city streets. You can do it, of course. Um, it's possible. However, it's a little tricky um, because you can't just like cut off like an important road. Like this road right here that's running from city to city, it's not gonna let me just delete it because then there would be no connection uh, for the people who wanna um, use it. Which is, uh, which I like, of course, it's realistic. And it gives a, it's a, gives a good challenge to the game. Now let's see, how do I want to do this? I'll just do it fast for the sake of the video. Let's see. Um, removing land, like raising it or lowering it, is also expensive. It's two thousand credits. And at the beginning of the game, like I said, you have 250,000 credits. So you don't want to have to do any um, raising or lowering land. 
because that's just gonna like that's a just a pointless use of your um, credits. It's much easier to just uh, you know, maybe there'll be a sharp turn or like an awkward corner that the train has to navigate or even it has to go up a hill. Um, but that's, uh, that's worth it. You know, it's not going to be a big, it's not going to be a bad thing if your train takes a little bit longer to get, uh, to the station. Um, because you'll save a lot of money. But later in the game, when you have more money, then, um, yeah. Uh, in, it's important to you know, start terraforming and making your lines run efficiently and as quickly as possible. I'm not sure how the game figures this out, but it does... The citizens of this city will know how fast the train is going from... is going to make its trip, and if the train comes frequently, and if the train trip is fast, then they are more likely to use your service. Um, right now, in the year 1876, that is not an important factor, but later in the game, that's going to be more important. When it gets to around, you know, 1960 or 70, then that's going to be an important part in making people want to use your network. And if you're playing um, an online game, which I have not done yet, but it looks a lot of fun, um, you can steal away um, your competitor's passengers by making a faster connection. So maybe they have a line that's going on, um, for example, it's going from here and it's going all around and connecting all of these uh, little cities and it's stopping at each one, which takes a while. If you wanted to make a straight line that didn't stop at any of these cities and just connected this big city with um, this, sorry, with this big city, you would definitely steal away um, a lot of your competitors' passengers because the ones that are going from the, the two big cities, they want to get there as quickly as possible, and they're going to use the service um, that goes there the fastest, which I think is pretty neat, and I think it sounds like a lot of fun. Um, however, in the online games, there's no fast-forward button, and... Like, I can't imagine, like, how slowly that light goes. I know there's an online game going on right now, and it's just been such a long time. And I just, uh, I don't know if I could, uh, really get into it since it goes so slow. But, uh, maybe I'll try in the future. Um, sorry, let me explain what I'm doing. So, right here, um, we have an intersection between this spur and this main line. Now, um... Signaling is obviously very important, and I don't really want to get into it right now because it's a bit complicated. Um, but there are some signal videos that um, are on YouTube, and I think I made one of them. And the rest of them are from the creators of Simitrans, James Pett. He's one of the creators. I'm not sure exactly how much he's done, but it seems like he's the guy that's doing most of the um, Simitrans extended development. Though I know there are um, a couple others, so I don't want to give anyone too much credit or whatever. Um, but anyways, you can watch these videos and you can see exactly how um, the signaling system works. It's a little complicated. It's um, similar to OpenTTD and old Simutrans, but there's um, a lot of new options. And these options reflect the, the timeline for, um, it's realistic like how signals were developed, the, what technologies were used. Um, so anyways, I put down a mechanical signal box and that brings up this, um, that brings up the option to build signals. So all I'm going to do is just put one here and one here. This will allow trains to pass. And it's important to build one of these because if there is no signal right here, then the train that's waiting right here will have to wait for a train to travel all along here and get past it up here before this train can, do, can go down. So this uh, speeds things up quite a bit. All right, so it looks like uh, we built that. Now let's build a station. I really wish I could build a station um, closer to the main city, but there's too many rivers and uh, land obstacles, and I can afford, I could afford to build on the land here 
now that I have a lot of money, but I don't want to start deleting these nice houses because um, it takes a while for a town to regain its population. So what I'm going to just do is just build a, I think this is already like fairly close, it's realistic. And that's this is the station for St. Clement Tadvale. Now let's see. Have to build another station. When the train leaves this station, it needs to have a signal. Otherwise, it will go very slowly. I won't get into why that is, but you need to have a signal right um, from the station. You'll notice that on all my other stations, I have signals on either end. Right here, right here, right here, right here, etc. So um, it looks like I'm all ready to uh, build a train. So let's see. Where's my depot? Oh yes, right here. Now there's a lot of options for the trains, and um, which is good, but it's a little confusing because you'll you'll be worried about if you're picking the right one, and I still don't like quite understand. There's so many um, you know characteristics of the trains like weight, max speed. Those ones are the simple ones because you want a light train in the early games because it's expensive to build heavy duty track. You want a light train and a train that goes fast, and you want one that's cheap to maintain. Um, I think the regular cost is, the, the flat cost of buying the train is negligible um, compared to the maintenance. So all of these trains are about the same maintenance, I think, at this point. But some of them can get quite expensive, and that's when you want to, those are the ones you want to avoid because that'll just suck out all the profits that the, that the line would be making. So let's see, I'm just going to buy this one it goes 95 miles an hour that sounds pretty nice mm -hmm. um, we have a large uh, selection of carriages but I'm just gonna go with let's see this one there's um, also different classes for the passengers I can't put my mouse over it or here I'll show you right here so see um, in the lower right side of this blue box you'll see that there is um, some values for the different passenger classes, medium, high, and then this car carries um, low class passengers. So that's what it sounds like, you know, like economy class, business class, first class, um, because there are di people of different wealth levels in this game. And so you wanna be able to cash in on the rich people who wanna take the train. You wanna give them a nice you know, carriage and charge them a lot. And then you also um, want to have enough room for the medium class passengers and the low class passengers. And of course you want few high class seats, you know, more uh, medium seats and the most low class seats because that's, that reflects exactly how many people are gonna be going, how many people are gonna be riding the train. Most of them are gonna be low class. So let's see, I am gonna build this one. And then you need this last piece, which is the brake carriage. Each train has to have a brake carriage, otherwise it can't go. Schedule. I'm going to start, I'm going to put it on this platform and the next stop. So it goes under a tunnel. It goes in a tunnel under the main city and then comes out over here. And right now in the game, it's too early um, to build underground rail stations. Um, so I can't have one right in the center of the city, which would be really nice because I would get a lot of passengers that way if it was like right in the center. But in the future, I will be able to do that. And I left room on my line, on my tunnel, to do exactly that. So we're just going to have them go this way. You need to place um, the add stop square exactly where you want the train to go for these platforms.
I'm really sorry if my game's lagging. I can kind of tell that it's going pretty slow. Okay. But thanks for sticking with me. All right, so now it's going to go all the way from this station all the way to that city. And then we're just going to promote to line. It's called line 67. Uh, you can be more creative in naming your lines, which would actually be a good idea because then you'll, you'll have to... Um, the way I do it is just called 67. And it's kind of hard to like know like where that is when you have a lot of lines. So if you can memorize the names of your cities and then give your lines the names of which cities it connects to, that'll help you out a lot. All right. Okay, so I'm gonna start this convoy. All right, and it's off on its first journey. And I'm gonna wait a little bit to start the next one because I wanna have them spaced out. So there it goes, end of the tunnel. I'll bring up this and it'll show you kind of like what we're looking at. Oh, right now it has 164 passengers on it already. That's great. Stops there, takes on some new passengers. Then it heads over this bridge. This bridge is a pretty recent addition to my map. Um, it's expensive to build these bridges. Obviously. And I'm going to wait until this train gets all the way to the city before I start this other one. That way I think they'll cross each other in the midpoint. It's off. I'm just going to start it right now. But yeah, that's pretty much how you build um, a line. Um, let's see. Yeah, it's, um, it's a little tricky. There's some, like, rules you have to follow, some weird rules that aren't exactly explicitly written. Um, and so sometimes you'll have trains just stopping randomly. And you'll get like an error message that's saying the train can't go any further because, you know, blah, blah, blah. Um, so, yeah, that's that's annoying. However, um, if you are encountering a very annoying error like that and you just can't figure out what's going on, I highly recommend you submitting a post to the forum for Simutrans Extended. And just give a screenshot and give a save game. Uh, submit the save game to and I'm sure someone will be able to tell you what you're doing wrong. There's not like that many bugs in the game. It used to be a little buggy, but I think they've worked them out pretty well and it runs pretty smoothly and you know, the way it's supposed to. So, um, wow, what should I, what should I go on? I'm not sure, really sure what time we're on, but um, I'll give you some other just like tips and stuff. You know, like I said, um, this game is gonna go into the year 2000 uh, which is great, um, and there's going to be airplanes, and there's going to be even maglev trains in the far future. I've never built a maglev train, um, but I'm sure it's very cool, very rewarding. You know, there's going to be high-speed trains. You're going to have um, the Eurostar available, and you're gonna, just going to want to build a really straight line for it to travel on as straight as possible, which I think is always fun when you have to build viaducts and tunnels and yeah, to get the high speed train to run as straight as possible. And there's going to be electric trains. We're going to soon, or not soon. I mean, maybe in like another 20 game years, we'll get the option to build overhead wires so the trains can use those. And those are great because it lets the trains accelerate much faster and it makes them cheaper to run. However, the upfront cost of electrifying the line is quite expensive. And soon we're going to be able to get buses, which will replace the trams. And buses are a lot uh, simpler and easier to use. They're the simplest form of transportation. In fact, if I 
if you're like a brand new, you know, newcomer to the game, I would just recommend starting a game in like 1980 and maybe just forgo the trains for your first, you know, for the first bit of time that you're playing and just do buses because buses are very simple to use and you'll make a lot of money or actually, no, you won't really make that much money, but you'll have, um, you'll have a pretty good network going and you can just figure out how to, um, you know, how to do it, how everything works. And then you can slowly uh, work your way up to trains because with all these like signals and stuff, it gets pretty crazy and a little confusing. Um, yeah. See, these are all these other cities I have connected all with rail lines. Over here, I had a ferry, a ferry port, but it was so slow, and so it made me just build a rail line out here. What's this building? Pottery. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to wrap up the video right now. I'm just going to end it. Um, if you've stuck with me this whole time, thanks for watching, and I hope uh, if you haven't played before, I hope you're inspired to play. Um, leave any comments or anything if you have any questions, and I will definitely answer them. Um, so yeah, uh, have a good day, and I hope you'll join me again the next time I do a video. Alright, thanks for watching. Bye.